This piece is called Enduring Afghanistan. It is a commemoration of the American soldiers killed in Afghanistan. My name is Harriet Bart. I'm a visual artist. I work across disciplines and in a variety of media. I wanted to do a map, and it felt to me that the way to make the map was to use materials that were significant. The chain link provides a grid. It also has a built-in symbolism and meaning to it, whether it is keeping us in or keeping us out or referencing other street side memorials that seem to spring up. We think about the memorial at the 9-11 site, the fencing and the people putting things in fencing. The dog tags are a symbolic way of counting and keeping track of the soldiers who died, men and women. There is one dog tag for each American soldier killed. Most of the dog tags are where most of the deaths occur. So there's many more here than at the very top. And um, it, it will grow, I assume. When I'm working on it, I'm counting to see how deep the layers of tags are. And the deeper it gets, uh, the harder it is to maintain a grid or any sense of structure, it becomes more chaotic, um, which I suppose is a reflection of the reality of, of Afghanistan. I like the sound of it a lot. It has a kind of eerie presence, and I, when I work on it, I can hear it speaking back to me. None of the dog tags have names on them, so it is important to me to keep track of the names. So I write them all in this book. I like using the handwriting like a drawing so that each signature is complete. The other thing that happens when you do this is I can't really make any mistakes. So I have to concentrate on the name. So it becomes a kind of meditation because I look at the name, I say the name, I write the name in order to be careful to not make any errors in it. I grew up with the concept and notion of remembering. My family is Jewish. Memory is a big part of that. The book is a big part of that. And I think one of the reasons that I cherish the book is that that is a place of recording and remembering. I think that books are about possibility. They're closed, but they're full. You don't see the contents right away. I was working on a painting in my studio. I was having a lot of trouble with it. And I had a, a moment where I just stopped and I realized that the painting was about writing and about mark making. And I had one of those moments of rare and wonderful epiphany. I turned around, there was a bookshelf behind me. I took the books off the shelf and I started to arrange them on the floor. And from that point on, I used the book as an object, as a volume, as a source and resource for information and a source of inspiration. Why does something land in your mind or in your creative imagination? That's the great and noble question about art. There's a Polish poet by the name of Wisława Szymborska. She always talks about how difficult that question is to answer. But she said, inspiration is something that visits all people who are curious, and it rises on mighty wings in three small words. That says, I don't know. I mean, it's the question. It's the asking of questions. What if? Could I do? How would I do it? Uh, it's not knowing. I think my love of art began gradually. I've always made things. And it wasn't until the late 60s, early 70s, that it occurred to me that I could become an artist. There were not many role models for women artists at that time. 
I got involved with the Women's Art Registry of Minnesota, and we began to support each other professionally and become the role models that we didn't have. It's very hard for me to describe what I do in a single sentence, but there's a wonderful word, and it's called bricolage. And bricolage is about bringing, I think, disparate things together into a unified whole. It's like working in collage, only three-dimensionally. I've been collecting tools for quite some time. Pieces of hardware, pieces of metal, typewriters. Sometimes the process begins with something that I find. Someone gave me an entire box of test tubes. I mean, a big carton of test tubes. The title of this piece is Autobiography, referencing the writing that underlies a lot of my work. And so there are things in here that are from books that I've read, um, detritus from various projects that I've done, public art projects, book projects, uh, things from my life. Here's a, actually a ring from when I was a, a child, my baby ring. This is some corn from a project I did for the Weissman Art Museum some years ago. This is a title of a book called Words and Things, and I liked it because that's what I do. I work with words, I work with things. There's a lot of remembrance. There are some acknowledgments of um, a sister who died, my father's not here, friend who's, who's lost, uh, some excitement and wonderful projects, the wonderful experience I had in Japan, the fun of doing the public art projects. So there's a wide range of experiences, and I think that they're in here, they're encoded, but they're in here. I have mixed feelings about putting something so personal on public display. I think as an artist, we are very conflicted. We do things in the studio that are private and personal, and then we're unhappy if nobody gets to see them. And then when somebody does get to see them, it makes us very anxious and protective about it. And there are stories behind all of these, some of them more personal than others. It makes me a little uncomfortable. But that's what art is about, I think, is telling the truth and a little discomfort. It's not a bad thing. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.